Oi, I'm the king of speed. Yo, that was, I, yo, I sound like Jack Hallow, so you can't even lie. Oi, I'm the king of speed. What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spanko, and I'm excited because I'm gonna be bringing you guys a first place profile. As you guys can see, uh, we're back at my house. We just finished Locals. I have Alpha filming and, uh, Alpha also has his food waiting here. We just got, like, we literally just got home and we're starving, but I'm forcing him to do this profile before he eats. Sorry, Alpha. Anyways, but today I got really excited because uh, we played RDA at Locals and I've been in love with this deck recently and I'm, I'm so happy that I can bring you guys a first place profile. I think this deck is insane. And honestly, it does kind of help when people don't know what all your cards do because they don't know where to hit. Like if they hit the wrong cards or if they imperm or ash the wrong cards, then it doesn't matter, right? So I think that's a perk that this deck has. But let's get right into it. I don't want to take up too much of your time. First things first, just three soul resonator i think soul resonator is really important i mean no i think we know how broken this card is this is a one card combo and the really cool thing about this deck is it has multiple one card combos i think there's nine different cards that get you to a one card combo and that one card combo might not be the most craziest combo but you're ending on like the most basic of things that are like a red zone and a supernova and that right there alone is just two disruptions alone right so you're obviously going to max out on a one card combo over here uh we're playing three crimson resonator as well now while this card isn't a one card combo it's still really important to play because it specials itself when you control no monsters and then if you have bone arch fiend as well this is like a two card combo Combo. so you want to just max out on all the cards that essentially get your combo started even if it's one card or two card and then we're playing two vision as well as two synchron these two no matter which way you do the combo you're going to be using these cards and the reason you're playing two and two is because if you draw into one of them you need one in deck for the combos to resolve anyway and if you draw into them it's not like they're bad to draw into per se but uh you always need one in deck so that's why two and two is perfect i, I wouldn't change these ratios up at all and then i'm playing uh three bone arch fiend this card's absolutely nuts this this, like, this card being able to special summon it from hand and then special summon from the graveyard as well for your follow-up plays is absolutely nuts so uh, you have to be maxing on this i'm actually really sad this didn't come as a super rare because it's uh, i think it's a new card it is a new card and then that's just i don't know that should be a super rare ots super rare next but anyways uh obsessive oof loops absolutely insane card i've never seen this card ever in my life before this deck came out but then this card is nuts it banishes cards from your graveyard banishes cards from your field so it sets up your disc pattern which is really nice and then on top of that it's not a dark and that's really important because a lot of people are on bestials right now because of tier limits and unchained and it's an earth right so it's one of those cards where you're only playing one because if this gets set up in the graveyard you, you know you're not losing it to a bestial right so that's safe so that's something that i think is really really relevant and then lastly we're just playing the one red zone a red zone of course is really powerful in terms of your, your end boards you always want to end on this card it's a pop it summons back banished monsters it's really really good in a lot of different ways right so that's why the one red zone and then lastly for the red dragon cards or the red dragon arch fiend slash resonator cards we're playing three gaia guys absolutely nuts it in itself is a one card combo as well so three gaia is a one card combo three red soul resonator so that's already six one card combos over there and this card is really good for follow-up as well it adds back every single turn so it's not like a one-time rota it's every main phase you can activate its effect which is absolutely insane and it has like a uct effect as well where it puts everything face down so it's, it's absolutely nuts and then we're playing three resonator call of course to get to your resonator monsters so that's three six nine one card combos which is absolutely insane it's a thing where it's like okay yes it loses to droll i'm gonna be honest droll and nib are the two cards that this deck loses to the problem is you don't really have a way to play around nib you don't really have a way to play around droll i, I am playing a way in here which you guys will see in a second but uh typically you don't so that's the thing granted i think droll is not in everyone's main decks anymore and i don't think nib is in anyone's main decks right now so it's a little bit safer i just like to play the safe route but uh you guys will see that when we get into it but that's it for the resonator cards i think that's all we're gonna need to play these are the perfect ratios absolutely insane super consistent super consistent one card combo one card combo one card combo two card combo technically this and like any other thing could be a two card combo as well so uh absolutely insane super super consistent and for the consistency we're also playing three prosp as well as one foolish foolish is really good because foolish sends cards like your oob loops if you needed to it can send your bone arch fiend it can also send your crimson resonator and these are three really important cards that you know you can kind of want in the graveyard for a lot of your plays so that's why i like playing the one foolish it's kind of like an extender for you prosperity though is something i kind of want to talk about because i think prosperity is a card that i actually want to cut and i'll explain what i want to cut it for later but it's a card that i want to cut because like i said i showed you guys this deck is so consistent as it is i found myself every time i activated pros i was either going for three just to maybe see a card like a hand trap or a non-engine just for like follow-up or on my opponent's turn so i could play but it didn't actually help me get into engine at all today because i actually never needed it to right so it's something i want to cut and i'll talk about what i want to cut this for later at the end of the profile but i still think it is a really powerful card of course right and then uh for non-engine we're playing three ash 
three in perm i think these are just the most important hand traps right now they're just the best hand traps especially when you're going second in perm i use most of the time as a board breaker rather than as a hand trap so it's like if my opponent activates a card they start setting up their combo and i know in perm is not enough i'll just hold the in perm when it comes back to me i'll start my turn by activating in perm and this way trying to like use it as a board breaker more than anything and i'm playing one nib and one drool okay so nib and drool are really important because remember how i mentioned earlier these are the cards we're scared of and you guys might be like why are you playing one on one and that's because i'm playing three cross out resonator now cross out resonator is absolutely insane you can of course call cards like imperm it's a resonator did i say cross out resonator cross out designator okay it's close enough okay but anyways three cross out designator now this card is obviously insane because you can call cards like droll nib so you don't lose to them you can call imperm ash as well which you don't lose to you can call prosperity which is really nice there's a lot of generic cards in here that you can call so this is really good in that sense but you especially just played it for these two because these are the two hand traps that i'm afraid of the most i'm also playing one of this of course just generic right so uh that's it for like the non-engine like hand trap stuff and then the last three cards in my deck that i'm playing are three triple tactics talent i thought this card was insane i think this card is insane into everything I I think it's good into purely i think it's into good into like all the meta decks it's good in the rogue decks as well so i thought tactics was really good and this is exactly why i also didn't want to play prosperity so let me let me get into why i don't play prosperity now or i don't want to play prosperity anymore i was actually ge like genuinely thinking i know prosperity is a card that like digs you deeper into your deck in theory but because i think this deck and i found this deck so consistent already i'm actually thinking of playing three thrust here instead of three prosperity and the reason i think three thrust is just better is because i can play three thrust two tactics and then instead of a third tactics i can play like another board breaker probably harpy's feather duster because i found that i had no back row hate in the main deck and so harpy's would be really nice playing thrust is really good of course for these reasons but you can also thrust for cards like imperm you could thrust for foolish in theory or resonator call and that's really important because you know these are other cards you can thrust for but on top of that a lot of decks right now in the metagame are playing thrust so you can also cross out thrust right like if you set up your first turn first turn combo and you set the cross out you can cross out uh thrust which is really really powerful i just thought like in terms of consistency you guys might be thinking okay but this is a draw card Technically, so is this. If you need to draw a card, you can use this to draw cards. So it's kind of like, doesn't really change the consistency of the deck. So again, and the thing with Thrust is, is it gives you more options in the side deck, which I really like, right? So I know it's not just the main deck, it's also the side deck, but that is for it for the main deck. It's 40 cards on the dot. Then for the extra deck, we're playing uh, three Red Rising Dragon. Um, the only reason I'm on three, honestly, was because of Prosp. I think I might still play on three, even if I cut Prosp, because uh, this card is not a hard one's return. It's absolutely nuts. One of your main combo starters, but you can probably get away with playing two if you're not playing Prosperity at all, right? so but i still like the three i'm playing two rda and two scarred red you can definitely get away with playing one-on-one -on -one, but to be honest i didn't want to have to play make 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 weird lines where i have to put this back and i have to do a lot of weird things playing two and two just made it really comfortable and just felt really safe right so two and two and prosp fodder if you need it to be frost fodder two abyss as well this card's absolutely insane one of your main combo pieces uh supernova dragon again this is what you end on with your one card combo so with your one card combo you're pretty much ending on supernova plus red zone all the time and this is really broken because you can activate your supernova you banish it banish all cards your opponent controls you activate your red zone you summon back the supernova supernova is not a hard one's per turn so you can do it again so banishing your every card your opponent controls twice is absolutely insane uh scarlight for time uh, i never made this but in theory it's really good uh one bane this is like for your otk combo you can summon bane abyss and then scarred red and that's kind of like over 9k damage so that's kind of like your otk combo plus your scarred red when it's used to summon your bane or your abyss when it summons the rda it blows up all attack position monsters your opponent controls so this is kind of like your otk combo then i'm playing uh the one dispatter i think this is all you need i don't think you need to play play two i think the one dispatter is enough i play in one of the cue ball this card i never made but uh in theory it's really good and then lastly this is my tech the one beals now uh beals is kind of funny it's kind of like a dark dragon that i kind of thought i don't like playing void ogre okay so the reason i played beals was because i don't like playing void ogre it didn't make sense to me there's so many cards in this deck where you can't actually get rid of your hand so void ogre didn't make sense to me and beals is kind of like a pseudo boss monster it can't be destroyed by battle or card effect and then it gains attack as well i mean that gain attack effect never came up i'm gonna be honest i actually never made it but in theory it can be good um another card shout out to my boy alpha who's uh the cameraman today but shout out to my boy alpha he uh gave me an idea for dark end dragon and Dark End Dragon is really powerful. I'm thinking you can cut either one of these for Dark End Dragon. It's just a uh, removal, right, for you, which is really nice. So I just wanted to give you guys that option as well, right? But uh, other than that, like, these are the most important cards. You have two flex spots here initially, right? So, or essentially. But that's it for the extra deck. Wouldn't change it up other than like the things that I mentioned. And then lastly for the side deck, I think my side deck was like perfect. So I played uh, three Druid Swarm and one Magnum. Uh, this is really good into the Tier Limits matchup. Tier Limits, funny enough, is becoming relevant again. It's really good into Unchained as well. So I really like these. You can play DD Crow instead because I guess DD Crow is decent into purely, but uh, I, I really like the Bestials. Getting the extra bodies on board is really good just to push for more damage. Um, and then Druid Swarm is removal as well. I'm playing three Kaijus because something that I learned through my boy Alpha 
was that this deck kind of struggles beating uh, boss monsters or tower-like monsters. So uh, this kind of just auto outs that, right? If it's purely, if it's Dragon Link, if it's Chaos Angel, whatever it is, like this card just outs it and I just like having that out, right? So the three Kaijus, again, I wouldn't have been playing this without uh, Alpha losing to boss monsters. So yeah, shout out Alpha because now I'm playing these. And then uh, I'm playing two Droll. Of course, we're playing one in the main deck, but I actually decided to play two more. The reason for that is because against Mana Diem and against a lot of Rogue decks, this card is absolutely nuts. So I just decided in the other two to make it three um, for those kind of matchups. And then I'm playing uh, one Harpies, two Cosmic, as well as two Lightning Storm. This is mostly for back row. Uh, you guys saw that in the main deck, there's no back row removal. I actually never sided these in because I never played against Labyrinth or anything today, which is kind of nice. But in general, like these cards are, are really powerful into a lot of back row matchups. And I think you need them. And this is another reason why I think Thrust makes so much sense because you can Thrust for cards like Lightning Storm, right? Like against, the, and like when you post side, if you're going second, you activate a Resonator Call. They go Ash or something like that. Just something basic. You can go Thrust, activate or search Lightning Storm, activate Lightning Storm, boom, right? So I think that's why I think Thrust is really good. You can search Har Harpy's Feather Duster, like I said, as well. So there's just so many options for you. And that's why I think Thrust in the main deck just makes sense. And then lastly, a card that I'm playing for Cross Out, but you can also thrust into this, funny enough, is D Barrier. Now, D Barrier is really good because obviously against the Mana Dia matchup, against a lot of matchups like D Barrier, you can just flip this. Against Branded, this is really, really good. And then obviously you lose to it because you're playing all synchros. So when you are going second, uh, you this in with your cross out so if your opponent decides to flip this you can cross out barrier and then you're safe right so that's why i'm playing the one barrier but again it's another card that you can thrust because if you are going first you can uh you know you activate a card you thrust into this if they if they start to hand trap you you thrust into this and then now you just set up uh literally your opponent can't play uh, but that's it Yep, that's it for the deck. 40 cards, 15 cards in the side, 15 cards in the extra. There are a few changes I said, like like I said, I would make uh, just after playing the deck at locals now. And I just feel like Thrust is just such a powerful card that you can't not be playing Thrust. And again, every time I play Prosperity, it was just a dig into non-engine. So it's really up to you though. You guys can try it out. Thank you, Alpha, for filming. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy. That is my first place RDA deck profile. Something that I've been obsessed with. Like this deck I've been obsessed with recently. And uh, I'm really happy that it's actually competitive and you can actually play it at a really, really competitive level. So by the way, for anyone wondering what my matchups were, my matchups were Marincis round one, Unchained round two, Tailmints round three, and then Rescue Ace, funny enough, in the finals. And then of course we ended up going 4 -0. That's it for the profile of the guys. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And with that, thank you guys. Peace.